Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar on Lear's journey to digital procurement excellence. We'll get started in just a moment. While we wait for just a moment to, for people to join the conference. While we're waiting for others to join the conference, we're seeing the conference room filling up here, I just want to remind everyone that in the upper right-hand corner of your screen, you'll see a resource link. That resource link will allow you to access materials used in today's presentation. In addition, on the bottom left is a question and answer area. Uh, we encourage you to use that Q&A area as you're watching the presentation. Whether you're watching today's presentation in a live mode or if you're watching it in a replay mode, it will work in the same way, which is you can post your question. At the end of today's live webinar, we will answer those questions. If we are unable to get to any of the questions, we will email them out. And if you post a question in that replay mode, you'll get the answers via email after after the um, post. So again, thank you so much, everyone. Welcome to, the, to today's webinar on Lear's journey to digital procurement excellence. We're really happy that you're here with us today. My name is Donna Wilczek, and I run product strategy and innovation for Coupa. I've been with Coupa for more than eight years now, and I've been in this industry of business spend management for about 15. For everyone that knows me, they'll tell you that I'm a bit obsessed with innovation and changing the space and really creating an area for customers in our community to grow and create the future of business spend management. It's great to be with you today. Also joining me today is Yatin Anand. Yatin is the Managing Director with KPMG LLP. Yatin specializes in large-scale technology-enabled transformation, and he has more than 15 years of experience leading procurement transformations at some of the largest companies around the globe. Yatin, it's been a great pleasure working with you through the years, and I'm so happy that you're here with us today. Welcome. Thank you, Donna, and thank you, everyone, for taking the time to join this webcast, excited about sharing our perspectives on this all-important topic and our joint journey with Lear and Coupa. Awesome. And I did save the best for last, Asim Malik from Lear Corporation. Asim has had a host of successful managerial positions spanning over 20 years in the business fund management industry. His latest role has taken him to the forefront of digital transformation with an opportunity to lead in BSM, positively impacting thousands of employees around the world. Asim has successfully led and implemented e-procurement and system integration projects in over 100 global manufacturing and engineering entities that have had extremely complex and varied ERP environments. I can only imagine. Asim, thank you for being a great part of this Coupa BSM community. Welcome to the webinar. We can't wait to hear all of your thoughts. Thank you, Donna. Good morning, good afternoon, and it, it is an absolute pleasure to be here and to share our story with you. Thank you. And with that, today on this webinar, we're going to be talking first with Yatin about trends and challenges that are facing procurement organizations today. I'm then going to provide a brief update and an overview on the Coupa platform and the Coupa maturity model for business spend management. And then Asim will really talk the details about Lear's procurement journey towards digitalization and procurement success. And so with that, we're going to jump right in. And Yatin, over to you. Thanks again, Donna. Uh, and welcome, everyone. Uh, I mean, it truly is an exciting time to be a procurement professional. Uh, the world around us is changing. And we believe procurement is uniquely positioned to capitalize on these changes and make tangible impact across the enterprise. Uh, some of the themes that we're seeing, and these are on the left-hand side of the page here, uh, that we're starting to see shape the future of the procurement function. Number one is self-service. We're all starting to see self-service everywhere, whether it be checking out at a grocery store or ordering food from your mobile app. 
uh, self-service is truly starting to become the norm in our personal lives. And we believe that this trend is going to carry forward in our professional lives. I mean, from a procurement standpoint, we're starting to see strides being made in this direction already. And as we look across the procurement ecosystem, whether it be um, AI-based uh, uh, systems that help predict demand for an internal customer and do automatic ordering, or automatic, automated analytics or fraud detection that we're starting to see in the procurement side of the house that can free up those procurement professionals to focus on more strategic tasks. We, we are really starting to see self-service take off, and, and, and it is our belief that it will be a key disruptor that defines everything we do as a procurement function in the future. Moving on to the next one, extreme automation. I mean, we're all hearing the term automation thrown around everywhere. A lot, large number of companies are looking at automation. I think with the way technology has advanced and kind of where we are on that spectrum, it is a very relevant topic and it is a very important topic, especially in the procurement space. I mean, a number of the manually intensive and administrative tasks that we've seen in the past are, are being replaced by technology. And this is really allowing procurement professionals to focus on more higher value activities, spending time with their suppliers, spending time with their internal customers, and, and, and providing them with new and innovative solutions that truly drive value. I think a good example of extreme automation, something that we're seeing at platforms like Coupa, others, is kind of taking the base cloud-based technology and adding other disruptors, uh, intelligent assistants, and, and these are starting to become game changers, and these are starting to play a very prominent role in, in our day-to-day -day lives. As we think about big data, I mean, we know that data and big data is in everywhere, but from a procurement lens, we, we truly believe data and analytics is one of the cornerstones of the future of the function. I mean, our biggest challenge with data in the past has been disparate sources, fragmented sources, and none of this being integrated or the ability to put them together to, to draw insights or draw accurate insights. That world has changed. With, with the disruption that has come, uh, it has become a lot easier to take data sources, uh, data from a variety of different internal and external sources and draw some actionable insights. I mean, we, we believe that procurement professionals and, and we're starting to see this at quite a few of our leading clients, are starting to become data masters, and they are delivering powerful real-time and accurate insights across the enterprise. So, so that world of data and analytics is quickly changing, and, and, and procurement is on the forefront of that change. And then as we, as we think about uh, the last bit here, I mean, there is a strong desire for companies to do more with less, right? And what we're going to end up with is, uh, more agile workforce, more flexible workforces, and, and a variety of different skill sets. Uh, I mean, gone are the days where, I mean, you're relying on the one individual who's been in an organization for 20 plus years, and he's the only one who knows everything about the commodity. With, with data the way it's headed, with uh, digitization the way it's headed, all of that information is available publicly, and it's all about pulling that information in and then drawing insights from that information. So that role of procurement is starting to shift, and, and we're, we're seeing procurement start to wear more of a hat of being a data master and a data driver, uh, and, and, because, and that's going to become a very relevant skill set in the future. So that's a little bit about how we're seeing the future shape up and, and where we do believe procurement is uniquely positioned to make an impact and, and drive a tangible change uh, across the organization. If we switch gears and we uh, talk a little bit about what the procurement journey has been and, and kind of where we've been as a procurement function, uh, procurement has evolved its focus from being purely a tactical purchasing function in the early 90s, where it was all about transactional procurement and purchase orders and uh, and, and those elements to becoming more of a cost savings engine. As, 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 the, as the century turned, as we think about the year 2000, a lot of procurement's focus shifted to cost savings and driving costs and driving value. Um, as we're looking to the future, I, I mean, we, we are really viewing procurement to be um, at the forefront of this digitization race. I mean, procurement is uniquely positioned. We have 
our hands in a lot of the data. We have our hands in a lot of the insights. Given that procurement as a function sits more in the middle office, we are the glue that connects the front office with the back office, and that then uniquely positions us to get on the forefront of that digitization race. <clears throat> as procurement marches towards this disruption, there are a few trends that are becoming very, very apparent. Um, I'll highlight two, three of these here. Uh, as we think about the second one down, the supplier networks and marketplaces. Supplier networks and marketplaces are becoming very, very prominent. And com as companies embrace technology, it really is becoming a lot easier to, for companies to direct their internal customers to these marketplaces. And then for procurement to do that without losing the visibility and the efficiency and the compliance, which are parameters that procurement is typically measured on. Uh, so, so the advent of technology is really also helping advance that whole supplier marketplace and supplier not network space, if you will. Um, as we as we think about um, procurement in, in the future, another trend that we see happening is procurement will become invisible to its customers. And we we believe that the days where the internal customer views procurement as the compliance army who slows down the end-to-end -end process are gone. I mean, I think where procurement is evolving to is continuing to attain those goals as a function, but becoming largely invisible to that internal customer. And this is achievable because of the various disruptors we've talked about, whether it be chatbots or AI or, or any of those things. And, and, and the level of automation you can drive or automated decision-making you can drive with cognitive and other disruptors uh, procurement is really starting to get into that position where uh, they, they, they're progressing what the customer needs and becoming invisible to those customers. And then last but not least, as we, as we think about data and analytics, I've already hit on this a little bit, that is the name of the game. Processing more data faster is, is going to position us to not only optimize our cost base, but also start to get closer to our customers, understand their behaviors, model their behaviors to some degree, and, and predict kind of what, what our customers are going to buy and help satisfy those needs quicker. So that's where we see the function evolving and, and where the future is headed. Uh, as I jump in and as I think about, uh, as I talk about the digital procurement platform and, and, and what makes up a digital procurement platform, um, I mean, companies like Coupa are, are the forefront on a lot of this innovation as we talk about BSM and, and, and their digital procurement platform. Um, I think the, the teams that are obvious in the digital procurement platform are, are these four teams to us. Uh, there's a continued focus on automation. And, and many of the disruptors are, are working concurrently to drive this automation. A platform like Coupa is, is the foundational layer in our minds for any of uh, this level of automation. And, and from there, you grow into a variety of other disruptors that can then work in tandem to give you the efficiency to give you the optimization, to give you the results um, uh, that, that we're all starting to enjoy and get, starting to get used to. Um, whether it be intelligent assistance layered on top of these cloud platforms or the use of machine learning and cognitive technologies, uh, I think this is where automation is headed. As we think about integrations, which is the second topic there, integrations have become a lot more seamless and secure. Uh, if you think APIs, if you think blockchain, if you think the variety of different technologies that we have in our arsenal now, it is becoming a lot easier to share data in a, in a secure and seamless fashion, both internally and externally. And this is a game changer for the digital procurement platform as well. As we, as we think about the ecosystem of different providers and, and these value-added services that are propping up around procurement, um, I think on, uh, there's a whole ecosystem providers, whether it be managed services providers, whether it be external research companies that are starting to capitalize on it. With the way the technology has advanced, it has become a lot easier to integrate uh, those factions as part of the end-to-end -end procurement process. Um, a good example of this is when we look at the supplier risk management space. There's a number of slew of external market research and data that's available here. Companies have already always done a good job of capturing the internal data, but now they're bringing in all of this external data and then forming kind of a, a full view of what uh, the risk tier of their particular suppliers look like, and then it's, it's a much more informed decision, and, and technology in large part is helping drive that. As I jump to uh, 
my last slide, and, and I, I talk a little bit about this. This is KPMG's view of the future of procurement. And, and it's a bit, little bit of a from to on, on, on where the function is headed. As, as you look towards the slide, the first three um, are, are really the themes that are helping define where the, the function is headed. Uh, it's supply-centric procurement, category innovation, and customer-centric procurement. Those, those really are key themes that we see uh, shaping the function. And as we look at the four chevrons on the right, uh, the digital procurement platform, insights and analytics, the workforce of the future, and agile operating model. Those are more enablers uh, to do attaining this vision uh, of the future of procurement. Um, if we talk supply-centric procurement for a minute, which is kind of the, the first chevron up there, uh, we believe that the days of kind of having the adversarial relationship with your suppliers with a myopic focus on cost, and those days are gone and I think a lot more a lot more of what we're starting to see and where the function is headed is strategic partnerships with suppliers. Uh, I think supplier sentiment is playing a very key role here as well and, and companies need to aspire to become the customer of choice with their strategic suppliers because by becoming the customer of choice they're automatically going to deliver value. Suppliers are going to want to work with you as a company and, and that will drive a value for it. Another good case in point when, it, we, when we think about supply centricity is what Coupa has done with their open buy platform. They have established deeper integrations with strategic suppliers, and that has enabled companies and, and, and Coupa's customers to channel more spend to those suppliers. They made things like punch outs completely searchable on the platform, which then automatically drive compliance, and, 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 and they, they're directing all of the end customers to those strategic suppliers. And I think that's a powerful thing. It's a great example of how supply-centric procurement is taking shape. If we talk a little bit about category innovation, this is all about shifting focus from the mundane tactical tasks that procurement used to do to more strategic activities. I think the easy access to data and analytics, which I've hit on, is playing a key role here. Um, I mean, rather than relying on your suppliers for information, procurement professionals of the future will have this information data available at their fingertips. I mean, the day is not far where you're going to walk into a QBR with a fully published uh, scorecard, which has both internal and external data insights, and uh, you can have a very, very constructive conversation with your suppliers. On the customer centricity side, uh, the new gen generation, if you think about the millennials who are coming into the workforce, is immensely focused on experience. They are used to shopping from Amazon. They are used to using Alexa at home and they don't want their uh, experience at work to be any different. They, they expect that when they come to work. And, and this will become a defining factor as, as companies start to think about how they attract talent and retain talent within the organization. So customer centricity is going to play a very big role as, as we think about uh, the, the procurement organization of the future. And then quickly, really quickly, as, as we talk about the four enablers, digital procurement platform, that is foundational to all of this. That is the key enabler. If we don't have the level of automation, if we don't have the technology, we don't have the disruptors, it is hard to attain this vision. We've talked a lot about insights and analytics and how that is the cornerstone uh, that defines procurement. Uh, as we think about the workforce and the operating model, which, is, which, which are the last two, these will have to evolve. Procurement will have to become more agile. New skills will be required uh, across the function if we are to attain uh, this vision of the future of procurement. Uh, that's all I had. Hopefully this was informative. It gives you guys a little bit of a sense of our view and our vision for where the function is headed. And with that, I'll pass the mic along to Donna, who will talk to us a little bit about the Cooper maturity model and where the platform is headed. Thank you so much, Yatin. It's certainly interesting, um, especially when you talk about the future of procurement and living in this era of the things you've described and being a part of not only shaping that future, but living in it every day too. So it's, it's a, definitely an interesting time. I wanted to spend a few minutes here talking a little bit about Coupa's approach to this comprehensive area of business spend management and the platform that drives customer value. Our approach is really designed around delivering a comprehensive platform so that companies can start managing all of their spending across 
business functions and, and avoid these siloed applications. The platform is designed with the user at the center of everything. And the reason the user is at the center of everything we do is because these people hold the key to the kingdom. These people are what drive the program successes all the programs, all the contracts, all the relationships that the procurement and spend management professionals create, without the users adopting and using these systems, all of it is for naught. You really can't have visibility, control, and compliance without the users coming together and using the systems. So we design with an eye towards being user-centric. And we've developed applications for some reason, there we go. We've de developed applications that surround the user with easy to use systems to capture every single transaction. Whether that transaction is pre-approved, post-approved, or unapproved, all of those spend transactions are captured elegantly and then able to be paid in a single unified platform. This enables every transaction that an organization is creating to be properly captured. We've then developed applications that surround these core applications of procurement, invoicing, payments, and expenses with power user applications that help optimize every single transactional dollar that is flowing through the system, giving people the ability to optimize all of their spending by analyzing it, by contracting it, by sourcing it, and by managing these supplier relationships. Everything from goods and services and contingent and extended workforce, all in the exact same platform. We've created this platform, all designed in a community model where every single transaction that flows across every customer, over 1,000 customers and over 5 million suppliers, 5 million unique suppliers around the world, form a big data warehouse that enables us to deliver more value to every single customer. We're pooling our co collective customer community data their spending, and their knowledge, bringing this community of business spend professionals together so that each individual customer can have more value than if they were working in a silo. Today, over $1.2 trillion in spend has flown through the Coupa platform, and over 100 countries are engaged in using business spend management processes between businesses, between buyers, and their suppliers around the world. What we've tried to do here through the years is create a very different type of company, a company that's focused on delivering value by creating a platform approach that is simpler so that you have maximum end user and supplier adoption that your organization is able to have faster results, both accelerated time to value and access to rapid innovation that is community driven, where the community participates with the product owners to develop pragmatic innovations. Just in the last year alone, we've developed over 300 new applications and we're spending over $50 million in R&D to deliver rapid innovation in three major releases a year. And delivering a solution that is smarter, that, is, that delivers prescriptions throughout the platform so that a customer can see a prescription that is used by analyzing their particular data, their spend data, their patterns, and comparing it to the ecosystem of community customers, their spend, their data, their suppliers, and looking at insights based on this core cohort data. All of it also delivers spend smarter components where we are combining this community power, aggregating the spending, and delivering more value in the form of pre-negotiated contracts 
so that each individual customer can have the power of this $1.2 trillion in aggregated spend and accessing these over 50 different supplier catalogs and over 40 different categories around the world in out-of-the-box pre-negotiated catalogs. Simpler, faster, and smarter. That is the type of company and the platform that we've created for our community of customers. Simple is really designed, again, around user centricity. When you log into Coupa, you're asked a very simple question. What do you need? Because these users don't have time to learn new systems and go from one system to another. And when the user answers that question, they're presented, they're guided to the right purchases, the goods, and the services right in the same system in a really easy-to-use system, very reminiscent of what they do in their home shopping areas around areas like Amazon. This is what drives adoption. When you create an environment that employees can embrace and adopt easily, and suppliers can also embrace and adopt easily. Suppliers, without having to join a network, without having to pay any fees, by simply using email or using a portal or using CXML or EDI, options available to those suppliers regardless of if they're a mom and pop business, a small contractor, or one of the largest suppliers in the world. Everyone has capabilities that work for them. And we've designed the platform to be faster and deliver results with sweet synergy. What that means is that every application in Coupa works in conjunction with the other applications. So as customers turn on applications, the systems get smarter and smarter because they're working together. So, for example, the sourcing area is constantly monitoring every transaction flowing through the Coupa core in order to surface up insights, to surface recommendations on contracts that may be expiring, too many off-catalog orders or large requisitions that are flowing through the system. So your sourcing managers are presented with opportunities versus having to go hunt for those types of things. And purchasing versus budget consumption, so that all of your actuals and what's in flight, as well as what's been approved, is visualized against your budget and presented to all the approvers at the appropriate time in the approval process. So you're not going over budget because you didn't realize that something was pending for approval. Every transaction tied back to the budget elegantly. And all the results tied instantly in real time against the contract so that you no longer have experiences where you have contracts and drawers or cabinets that are tied, that are not tied to the transactions flowing through the system. Now your contracts can come alive and you can gain all of the value that you negotiated. This is the power of sweet synergy where these applications work together in the platform to deliver more value. And smarter decisions. Yatin talked a lot about this evolution of data and this explosion of data. What we've done at Coupa is we've built a platform over the last 10 years to collect data and aggregate data in a big data warehouse. We call it community intelligence. So the platform is designed. So every customer is using a Coupa instance, which is all configurable millions and millions of com, um, configuration permutations allow customers to configure the system to their unique business, but the data in the underlying model is all aggregated and normalized across customers and anonymized. So the system listens objectively to all this data flowing through the system, the transactions, the processes, the configuration, and the results, and is able to then think through all of these transactions by applying AI and looking for patterns and looking for insights and looking for benchmarks and prescribing solutions to each customer so that each customer is able to benchmark themselves, reduce their risk, and have insights 
that they simply would be unable to have if they weren't leveraging the power of this type of community intelligence. And that's something that's really special, the power of this community intelligence, because it grows every single day. As every transaction runs through the system, the system listens, thinks, and prescribes based on that real-time knowledge. It's been really interesting watching this evolution of community intelligence and the impact it's having on our customer results. Examples are things like community-powered risk mitigation. So now, when a business looks at a supplier, they're able to get a view of the supplier that's just never been available in our space before. And as I mentioned earlier, I've been in the space almost 20 years. It's the first time where you can look at a supplier and understand their risk profile as it relates to other customers and other businesses around the world that are engaging and transacting in real time with that supplier. How are they doing and how do their transactions and their business with other people around the world impact and inform your ability to understand the supplier and understand your risk of using the supplier? And what we've done with Coupa is that we've built a BSM maturity guide, which helps companies understand their path to digitalization and spend management success. And what this maturity um, guide does is provide guideposts to companies for them to understand where they are in their procurement transformation journeys and how they can reach spend management success. The model is designed to deliver insights into how a company can start by transacting and getting control, visibility, and compliance of every transaction flowing through, the, through their company, how they can then evolve into optimizing their spending and looking for opportunities, and then harmonizing business spend management so they can move into proactive monitoring of spending. The maturity model is designed to deliver prescriptive intelligence around what applications companies can use to move along their maturity journey. And it's designed to give hundreds of very specific leader-level KPIs that give businesses insights into how they're running their organization and how they're performing against their cohorts across the globe. A really powerful model that makes things KPI driven so that you can better benchmark and understand your own business and your maturity. All of this platform model is designed in such a way that you can turn on capabilities as you're moving through the maturity and evolution of your programs in your organization. The platform is used by companies that range in size from 50 million in annual revenue to hundreds of billion in annual revenue. Everyone uses the same platform, the same configuration model with millions and millions of permutations to configure business processes for their own unique business processes. This model is designed to never outgrow your business and really allow you to capture, control, and optimize all of your spending. And that's a little bit of an overview of the Coupa platform and the maturity model that we've created for business spend management to help our customers digitize their business and digitize their spending. And with that, I wanted to turn it over to Asim. Asim, um, you have had a great success story in your own digitalization of spending at Lear, and I'd like to turn it over to you now so you can share your experiences. Thank you, Donna, for the kind words. And, and again, I'm very happy to have this opportunity to share our e-procurement transition with you. And it is quite a challenge to compress a few years of activity into 20 minutes. So I assure you, I will do my very best to give you some of the key highlights and success factors along our journey. So. Our mission was to implement one procurement system in all of our locations, which was quite a challenge considering we have a multi-billion dollar spend, diverse commodities, 
and thousands of employees around the world. And to jump to one of the key success factors, we managed to deploy Cooper into 189 locations within 1.5 years with very good tangible results, which I will show on later slides. A little bit about Lear. Um, Lear is one of the world's leading suppliers of automotive seating and electrical systems with an operational history of over 100 years. We have 169,000 employees. We have 261 facilities in 39 countries and over $20 billion in sales per year. We literally manufacture products for nearly every vehicle manufacturer around the world. Our product supply covers a wide spectrum from premium cars such as Ferrari, Bentley, Rolls-Royce to the higher volume based OEMs such as Ford, Nissan, and BMW. In fact, we have Lear content on more than 400 vehicle nameplates. So there is a very high probability that every person on this planet has experienced or touched a Lear product at some point in their life. And just to put Lear into context, um, we are quite big. Uh, we are ranked at 147 on the Fortune 500, and uh, this graph hopefully gives that uh, that relative measure of magnitude. So, a little bit about the reasons why we needed to move towards e-procurement. As a large corporation, um, we ultimately needed to wrap our arms around our indirect spend and digitally standardize as much as possible, as both Donna and Yatin alluded to, that digitally standardization is, is, is the way forward. And we need to drive to one system, not multiple. And in fact, we led a survey pre-Cooper launch, and some of the results were quite damning. In fact, 48% of our 100-plus entities in Europe we literally had a manual approval process uh, for requisitions via Excel. That means that we are pushing paper around 48% of our locations gathering signatures, and that's just a, that's a huge waste. And we're a corporation that's on the forefront of technology. We spend millions on continuous improvement, lean manufacturing, and yet in the procurement activity, we was pushing paper around the factory. We also needed to obtain instant spend transparency, and that was really a key prerequisite. We spend billions, and we have a wide spend portfolio, and we really needed to have that level of clarity. Another important point, which after many conference calls and customer reference calls, I feel that many are in the same boat, we had a varied ERP environment. Uh, and we need to integrate that complex environment within one system. And that occurred over a period of time. I mean, LEA grew organically and by acquisition. And we have been very active in recent years in the latter. And with that, we became very varied, especially with procurement systems. And you also inherit a mindset with that. And that's something that we need to cross over towards a digital perspective, which having a user-friendly tool just makes the whole process a lot easier. We also needed an e-procurement system to leverage save initiative and benchmark global data. Another side very favorable outcome was bolstering our compliance activity. Delegation of authority was baked into approval flows. We could have policies within Cooper, we had audit traceability, we had role segregation. So that's something that we really needed to go to as well. And last but not least, we needed to establish a platform to integrate and improve related processes. I think the next picture really does say it all, and that's the position that we was in. Although the amount of paper shown in 
the picture may be a little underestimated, but the objective was clear. We needed to eliminate waste. In terms of systems, we, we were systematically, and still are, systematically diverse. We had a number of ERPs and back-end systems for reasons explained in the previous slides. And as you can see here, we have a number of household names. And we managed to connect our multitude of ERP systems with the Cooper platform, which is a huge plus in regards to cohesion. Now, listed on this slide is our success factors. Now, these are some of the key success factors that worked for Leah. Now, I will elaborate on some of these on further slides, but as you can see, there's six here, and it really goes from end to end when you consider from source to launch and right up until aftercare. And some of these points are really paramount to consider as you're going through the cycle process. So let me go to some of these on next slides and, and, and really stress some of the points that we learned were important to us. So at the front end, we were <clears throat> extremely vigorous in doing our homework and selecting the right software and system integration partner. Now, we had started off with a product which did not fully meet our needs as we considered other regions. So we really spent the best part of eight months to complete and have a clear assessment. And it was in-depth quantitative assessments that we've done. And in brackets here, you can see 120. In fact, we compiled 120 weighted quantitative questions to compare different systems. And at the outset, that was developed and fabricated with a cross-functional team from IT, from purchasing, from finance, from our compliance team. So we really, within one document, we gathered everything that we learned, what we didn't want from a system, and what we do want. And with that, we assessed various um, software systems and integration partners. And um, Cooper and KPMG came up on top. And, you know, we assessed all the relevant areas within that. Some of the tick boxes you can see which were really high and critical for us. And we felt that that time was invested correctly and really worthwhile because implementing a system that's an incorrect fit and correcting that aftermath is much more costly, as well as the risk of losing credibility and the momentum within the company. So moving to one of the other key points of our success factors, um, having a global blueprint was really totemic towards the entire implementation and overall success. Having that cross-functional input and architecture set early in the cycle was vitally important. So where would the requisition approval, PO receipts sit with the organization? Where do we have our interfaces? How do we relate and talk between Cooper and the ERP? And which master data do we transfer over? So getting that plumbing correct is, uh, was really paramount for us. And we managed to do that at the outset. And any deviation to that should really um, be approved by exception only. Another area where we were very meticulous was in our deployment strategy. And we ran a, a tightly managed process here, which we continuously baked in any lessons learned as we went along. And we really kind of, to support and facilitate the change management process, we defined it and prepared it very carefully. And I think the statement, um, fail to prepare, then prepare to fail, fits in quite well here. As you can see in the, in the chart, we really focused in, in four key areas. That's orientation and communication, plant data collection and supplier enablement, testing and training, 
and then moving over to the go live and hypercare. So they're the kind of four key areas that we consider to be really crucial as part of the deployment process. I think um, on a previous, uh, on Donna's dialogue, she indicated that user is the center, and I couldn't agree anymore. One of the hardest elements for change management was to engage mass crowds to do something different with what they're doing today. And in fact, it's easy to sit still and avoid change at the risk of not staying ahead. So user interactivity was vital. It's the users that will ultimately drive the ongoing success. So getting that crossover effectively was, was really our objective. And some of the initiatives that we uh, implemented was, was really doing mass communication and awareness sessions early. And given as many demos, we, we were not afraid to over-communicate the capability of the Cooper system. In fact, we, we proned on it. We engaged management, all management in milestones, so they understand the concept of what we're trying to do. We developed customized short training videos, videos which were specific to Leah. We had comprehensive role user instructions. Although I have to say they were really learned, uh, used as a backup because the system was intuitive enough. People would jump in and just manage to navigate themselves, which was one of the prerequisites of, of having Cooper. We also had, during the user acceptance testing, we really opened up the box. We gave playbooks. We had sandbox sites. So people really had a good feel. We got a focus group from each location to jump into the system and, and, and have a play and understand with a script the capability of the system. Now, that gave users confidence before we go live. And as we went through the communication channels, we always encouraged our our users to, to keep an open mind because change is difficult and uh, it, it's something that needs to be managed. And <clears throat> I've heard a lot of good debate in regard to change. And in my opinion, the receptiveness to change is proportional to the apparent benefit. So we pushed and we persevered on the education of measurable value such a system would bring. And that that did give us some good return. In terms of some of the benefits, and you know, I'll get to some measurables in a second, but you know, we got to one common global system. We drove consistency and common procedural best practice. We established instant spend transparency. With 100% user adoption, we gained instant visibility, allowing more informed decision-making and business opportunity is, was what we were looking for. We established a paperless online system. We got to the compliance enhancements. We integrated the, the delegation of authority. We put role definition. We had policies. And we extended that with the use of custom object forms in key areas of form approval. And we fully utilized the budgeting and reporting. So full control for budget management and flexible reporting capabilities. So now jump into really, this is the, the, the punch slide. Um, and having the success metrics um, I'm quite proud of. Um, we deployed in 189 locations in 29 plus countries within 1.5 years. Our spend transparency in Europe alone climbed from zero dollars to over half a billion in just a year and a half. We managed to successfully interface all of our ERPs and backend systems within Cooper. And we established over 209,000 POs within the system. Our manual procurement processes went from 23% to 0%, and our manual requisition approval processes went from 48% to zero. All that paper pushing, gone. Moreover, 
our 26% of locations using bespoke systems went to one common system, and we managed to obtain a 100% user adoption rate. And these numbers is what we've encapsulated within a 1.5 year time frame. Now we've gone further. Now we have over 95% of locations deployed with Cooper and a spend of over 2.5 billion and over 435,000 POs in one system with instant spend transparency. And Yatin also alerts to data and, and analytics in how important that was. And we also took full advantage of the analytics module providing excellent holistic data reports to help us monitor our key performance metrics within our business spend. Yeah, I think um, I always have to um, interject here. I think every time I see these results and every time I um, talk to you and you issue the new KPIs and, and your um, successes, it's just fantastic to see. I've been in this industry so long and every every time I talk to a customer like you where it's these are the KPIs we set to achieve, here's how we measure them, and here's where we're at, and here's what's next. It's, it's just really great validation that we're, that we're working collectively really well to, to deliver value. And very, you should be very proud of this. I think we should be collectively proud. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, Donna. So coming towards the, the last slide now, and... Um, you know, adopting from a layer perspective, adopting a cloud platform was just the first step. It gave us an excellent foundation and baseline to go on and migrate other spend management processes to bring more value to our business. We managed to saturate our locations with the Cooper P2O system platform, and we're moving on. We're moving further with Cooper. We we have recently gone live with Cooper invoicing in our North America locations and continue to that, that activity with other regions. And we're in test phases with the contract collaboration with Cooper. So the fun and the goodness continues. And as a, as a final closing statement, I, I really have to give recognition and kudos to the Cooper and KPMG teams and moreover the, the LEAR personnel as Behind all of this um, was a very focused and determined team, in addition to a supportive uh, management structure that not only believed in the strategic importance, but also drove it. So that brings me to the end of my presentation. Back to you, Donna. Thank you so much, Asim. Um, I absolutely second this, and I'm sure Yatin does as well. The, this community that we've created here with Lear and KPMG and Coupa team members, as well as the rest of these customers coming together to deliver even more value, has been really um, was, was interesting. What you said is this fun uh, component, and I think it is fun when you get to a place where you're really delivering real value to users across the globe and the business respects what is happening. Um, certainly, I've seen what you've done and what you've delivered um, is, is truly impressive, and, and it's been fun working with you. Uh, with that, we're going to ask some questions, do some Q&A here, and we won't be able to get to all the questions that have come in, but um, all the questions will be answered and sent via email as well. So I'm going through the questions, and let's give you one. Uh, Yatin, we'll start with you. There's a few questions here uh, for Yatin. Can you help us understand better how organizations can get let's see how organizations can get executive alignment and start this digital procurement journey? So can you give us some guidance on what you've seen around how to actually start these types of processes? Yep, absolutely. Thank you, Donna. And uh, I have had the pleasure of supporting a number of organizations kind of build that vision, build that case for change, if you will. Uh, I mean, I think the first step is, is generally the case, kind of taking a look at the rear view and seeing you know, what your common trends are, what, what you traditionally call what your current state looks like and reflecting on that. 
Um, and when I say reflecting on that, truly just reflecting on that, not spending months and years collecting that information and, and boiling the ocean with that stuff, but very quickly getting to the themes and the trends that are going to be part of your case for change and, and, and that determine your, your business case or case for change that would go up to your executive ranks uh, for the sale. The other big thing that's worked out really, really well for us is making sure that you have a cross-functional sponsor team or executive team in place or, or you are at least pulling in the right functions. I mean, generally, we oftentimes we see where these cases for change don't go through even though there's a very uh, valid reason for it is, is when, when the right parties are not on the table or the right parties are not educated enough about the problem statement and, and, and the value at hand. Um, I guess the general functions that we see coming together and coalescing on, on a case for change like this um, are, are uh, procurement, IT, finance at a minimum, and then of course, uh, whatever the appropriate business representation is. Uh, to the extent that you can get sponsorship from uh, all of those uh, legs of the stool, if you will, um, it, it, it makes it a lot easier to get the case for, case for change through. And then once you have that case for change, typically from a pure journey perspective, as we think about the implementation, I referenced this as I was presenting. I mean, I, I, I truly treat the cloud platforms uh, such as Cooper to be the foundational layer. I mean, that is the starting point. Uh, I've seen oftentimes companies kind of beat around the bush and look at opportunities to do other disruptors first and then try and get cloud in later. I think what's been successful for a majority of our clients is kind of lay that foundation, lay that groundwork, have a platform like Cooper that can provide you with um, a level of automation, the right level of visibility, the right level of compliance, and, and give you that base layer of data that you can then pivot off of and build and apply other disruptors to. So that's where we've seen you know, and, and enjoyed success with a number of our clients is, is in that sequence. So I'll pause there, Donna, and see if you want to add anything else to that. Yeah, no, I think that's fantastic. I know um, a lot of questions have come in, so I think why don't I go ahead and ask um, you, I'll see one question. Questions came in, um, can you go deeper in the factors you considered when selecting a solution and system integrator, as well as can you talk a little bit more about KPMG's role in the planning and deployment of Coupa at Lear? Sure, sure, sure. And I think one of the slides helped explain some of that in terms of the 120 quantitative assessments, which really we um, kind of gathered a lot of questions, a lot of lessons learned, and, and started to go to town in terms of making sure that we were picking the right product, the right partner. And when we considered the, 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 the BSM solution, you know, we were looking for really an established company, um, a company that had the right mindset, innovative, and, a, and had a user-friendly, agile system, and a forward-thinking company. And when we were considering the system integrator, some of the key factors from a system integrator perspective was they need to understand us. Uh, we're very dynamic. We're very, we're very fast. We have limited time, and we need people to listen. We need people to jump on board with us that not only show that level of empathy, understanding, and flexibility to work with Leah, but also to execute within a global footprint because we, we are spread everywhere. And, and KPMG had all of those factors. They, they kind of came in and fully understood what we were trying to do we was in a labyrinth. They gave us the level of direction. Um, they helped us map out the, the typical deployment process, some of the factors, and help us with the design at the very beginning as well, and really highlighting some of the roadblocks that we might encounter as well. So that, were, that, that I would consider to be the key factor. Thank you. Um, I am looking at the clock, and we're at the top of the hour already. There's a lot of questions we did not get to, so we're going to put an email together and make sure we answer all these questions. Um, I can say that I've truly enjoyed listening to all the details. It's sometimes great to just take a step back you know, um, and look at what's been achieved in, since those early days of selection to implementation to roll out. And I truly am excited. It's a pleasure to work with both of you. 
Asim and Yatin on a daily basis. And, you know, I'm honestly looking forward to doing another one of these in two years and, and talking about where we've gone and, and what's been delivered. So Yatin, thank you, and Asim, thank you. And thank you so much to everyone that joined the call. Um, wonderful having you today. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Yatin.